time is. But you can make a good guess without even looking at your watch. We're constantly checking the time to make sure we don't miss a TV programme or if we're going round to our mates. But what is time and how do we measure it? That's today's big question. Some of the first things we invented were timekeepers. Over two and a half thousand years ago, the Egyptians made the sundial. But instead of 24 hours in a day, they divided daylight into 20 sections, each one lasting just over half an hour. The trouble was, nighttime was a bit of an issue for the sundial. Now, the Greeks used candles. They would light a candle at sundown and then make a mark to see where the candle bent down to by sunrise. Then they'd make some more evenly spaced marks to show roughly how long to go until dawn. Now, the nail made it into an alarm clock because when it got to dawn, the nail would drop out and clatter on the tray. Now, this is one of the first chiming clocks. Small rocks tied to an incense burner with a thin piece of cotton. Now, as the stick burns, the cotton breaks and the rock drops onto the metal plate. Now, the problem with all these clocks was they didn't last very long. Incense sticks and candles burnt very quickly, and even the sun disappears at the end of the day. What they needed was something that could be measured but never ran out. Something that flowed continuously, like time itself. Water. Clepsidras or water clocks were used by the Greeks, the Egyptians and particularly the Chinese. Now as the water level rose, it pushed up a float which moved a hand to tell the time. But water clocks required a never-ending and constant flow of water. The trick is to get a bucket with a hole in the bottom. Now when the bucket's full, we know with scientific accuracy that the flow of water out of the hole will always remain the same. Now that's because the flow of the water out of the hole depends on the water pressure and the water pressure comes from all the water piled up inside above the hole. So we know that the flow of water won't stop and it won't get faster or slower. Now if you had a much bigger water clock than ours, it'd take a whole day to fill up. But it would fill up eventually and then you'd need a servant to empty it so you could start again the next morning. See you later. Well, hang, hang on a minute, what do you mean servant? Can't we just get a digital clock, Kate? The feet are getting cold. Yeah.